Welcome to Infinity, and in this episode, you'll see the most genius, fast, unusual, and mesmerizing workers who will impress you with their incredible skills. Many people love the smell of freshly cut grass, but I think those who mow it do not really like it because it's associated with long and hard work. Use this genius's life hack. The man installed a pole in the middle of the lawn, attaching a lawnmower to it with a rope, set the trajectory, and started it. While he was calmly chilling and doing his own things, the lawnmower trimmed the lawn in neat and beautiful circles. I don't know if this girl's a bartender or just a visitor to this pub. If it's the latter, she definitely needs to get a job at the bar. Check out how she opened beer bottles. Five bottles in a second or so. The fastest hands in the Wild West. Here's another fast bottle opener, but this time with soda bottles. It doesn't matter, the guy opens them at bullet speed. I think he could open a hundred bottles in just half a minute, if not faster. In China, fish balls are a very popular dish. They're often sold on the streets, and the demand for them is enormous. This means they need to be made very quickly. Thanks to workers like this, no Chinese person or tourist will go hungry. The woman literally shoots fish balls from her hands making them incredibly fast without even looking. Skill maxed out. Food industry workers have to do a lot of handwork. Some make dough and meat products, while others do the peeling. For example, this cook has to peel a huge number of apples, and to make his life easier, he came up with a brilliant idea. Stick a drill into the apple, turn it on, and press a vegetable peeler against the apple. In just a few seconds, the apple is peeled. Personally, I've always been amazed at how cashiers scan items so quickly because you have to get skilled at bringing the barcode to the scanner, but I'm even more amazed at super fast cashiers. For example, this cashier quickly served a girl in a perfume store, though she did throw everything into the bag a bit carelessly. Another cashier at a grocery store scans items as if his shift ends in 20 seconds. And this cashier from another supermarket is also impressive. He may be slightly slower than his colleague from the previous video, but he does it more dramatically. It looks a bit strange, but impressive. Geniuses think differently from ordinary people, otherwise they wouldn't be geniuses. For example, these workers decided that using tools to unscrew giant nuts was too boring, so they started unscrewing them with ropes. Turned out to be much faster, simpler, and more efficient. This worker came up with an optimization process for production at a factory that makes metal sheets. They come out of the conveyor not very straight and had to be adjusted and pulled to the right place. So the genius brought in some kind of rolling stand. He throws it to the beginning of the line, the metal sheet comes out directly onto the stand and it smoothly pulls it to the worker, after which the process repeats. The result is a stack of neatly laid metal sheets with minimal effort. Janitors also have their life hacks, only the most genius ones, of course. Instead of sweeping and standing on a dusty road, this janitor from India made an unusual screw from four brooms and installed it on a cart. The structure rotates itself, and the brooms effectively clean dust and debris from the road, and the janitor just leisurely rides along. He's already got everything done in his life. Next up, we have glass blowers, guys who can create real miracles. Firstly, they have some insane lung capacity. And secondly, well, you'll see for yourself. This glass blower blew the glass and made something like a base in the shape of a pear, then placed it in a mold. Now he starts blowing with all his might. It seems like his cheeks will burst from the effort. Incredibly, after a few seconds, they pull out not a pear, but something like a truncated cylinder. It's very smooth and beautiful. You could use it to create a spotlight or suggest your ideas for this glass shape in the comments. What the next team of glass blowers did is on a completely new level. They processed a glass shape that initially looked like some kind of tip, passed it through furnaces, made cuts on the molten glass, rolled it in something, twisted it, and ended up with a glass octopus. Check out how cool it looks. It's a real work of art. You could easily ask for a few thousand bucks for something like this. 
Do you think working on a loader is boring? Many of you probably do. You just load, unload, lift, lower things all day. But if you're a genius worker, you can have fun on a loader. Look at the trick this backhoe loader driver performed. He rode on two front wheels as if he would get some bonus like in GTA and then almost vertically backed into an open pickup truck. It was very impressive. Not everyone can repeat it. Even more genius ideas come from regular excavator drivers, the ones with giant buckets. This worker had to level a road and all he needed was a tire, a bucket and skillful hands. Another excavator driver decided to clear snow from the road in a genius way. Attach a metal sheet to the bucket at the right angle and just drive forward. As they say, work smarter, not harder. Excavators can also be used to create holes in the ground. These workers brought some sharp beam. The excavators bring it to the desired spot and drives it into the ground with the bucket, leaving holes behind. And here's how workers dig drainable ditches. With a special bucket with branches that removes the soil and creates a recognizable structure. You can really get mesmerized watching this. Excavators can also help workers level concrete. This worker was seated in the bucket and brought to the center of the concrete pour. You can't reach there easily and level everything neatly, but with this life hack, it's possible. Speaking of concrete, let's look at this video. Workers needed to draw wavy lines on the concrete and they used simple rakes with many tines to do it. In a few minutes, you can turn the entire surface of the future road into a wavy pattern that's pleasant to walk on. A wind generator is both a simple and complex device. It's complex in its installation. Watch how these workers set the tower on the base. They need to fit it precisely into the slots so it stands on these giant bolts below. The workers gently lower it and the tower fits perfectly. Perfectionists just experienced unreal pleasure. Developers deserve huge respect for calculating such a structure to the millimeter. It's grandiose. While workers in one section of the chocolate factory are busy mixing chocolate, others deal with ready-made bars. They come to a worker who almost individually places them on a special belt that sends them to the next department. There, the bars are evenly distributed and packaged in shiny wrappers. This is how many chocolates are made in production. It seems that this truck driver is behaving strangely, sticking to the wall as if afraid of oncoming cars and not entering the turn correctly. But in reality, it's quite the opposite. He's doing everything perfectly right and even genius. His task is to enter the left tunnel and watch how he does it. The calculation is amazing. Everything is measured almost to the centimeter. That's why he had to stick to the side. If he drove in the center of the lane, he wouldn't make the turn and would cause a massive traffic jam, blocking the tunnel on both sides. How should you carry bricks? In your hands? Or maybe in some kind of wheelbarrow? What about your head? It's not just for thinking, but also for carrying a huge number of bricks, at least for this worker. He not only has an incredibly strong skull, an insanely strong neck, but also some extraordinary sense of balance. At first, I thought he'd drop all the bricks, that it was just a trick, but look, he really carried all that load on his head without stumbling and even crossed a narrow bridge. Even Cirque du Soleil doesn't balance as cool as this. Here's his colleague, another Mr. Ironhead. Here we can see better how such superhumans load themselves with bricks. This worker has so many of them that it seems he could even build a mini house from them. And this is some kind of world record. Not bricks, but bags of corn. But there are so many of them, it's just an incredible amount. The man turned into a walking tower. It's amazing he can walk at all considering there's 220 to 330 pounds of load on his shoulders and head. While some people prefer to use the strength of their neck and head, others carry heavy loads the traditional way, on their backs. But it still looks incredible. This worker managed to lift and carry about 66 pounds of bricks. After this video, I also dropped a few bricks after watching it. This guy works with heavy loads too, but he specializes in kegs, or whatever they're called. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comments. These things also weigh a lot. But he not only can carry them but also throws them one on top of the other into the truck. No matter the height, he always throws and hits very accurately, forming rows and towers. This guy mastered this skill perfectly. And that's also a challenging task, especially if there's a lot of cargo. For example, here, the truck is packed full of bamboo. 
They could have called in a second truck or other equipment to unload the cargo, or they could be a genius driver who knows physics like the back of his hand. He skillfully unloaded the bamboo from the truck platform using reverse, braking, and suspension knowledge. Back to bricks. Some carry them on their heads, while others quickly lay them on the road. The worker works at super speed. He instantly places the bricks in the right order, and the road appears right before his eyes. Literally. I hope he got a bonus afterward. Generally, roads are paved differently, sparing workers from heavy physical labor and the need to stand in a bent position. They use pavers. Bricks or paving stones are loaded into them. The material flows down a moving belt, and it's laid right onto the ground. It feels like stones are pouring down like a waterfall and solidifying on the road. Mesmerizing to watch. Next up, another mesmerizing thing. A worker trims an overgrown hedge. There's nothing special about it, but he does it very neatly and evenly, and that's a unique kind of visual pleasure. Here's a more complex trimming, creating a specific pattern or design on the hedge. After such a unique barber visit, the hedge looks very nice, not like some untidy bush. You can get mesmerized by waiters' work, too, especially if they work in Chinese restaurants. There, spinning discs are placed on tables, and waitresses use them to elegantly serve the table with plates and bowls. It's a genius method that significantly speeds up the work. This colleague of theirs doesn't serve tables but clears and wipes them. The way he does it, probably no one else does. He turns the simple act of cleaning the table into a real show, wiping the surface so quickly and vigorously as if trying to leave a hole in it. These guys from India also prefer speed. They work in something like a printing house where they need to stamp papers manually. They do it so effortlessly. The sound is such that it seems like machines and robots are working here, not people. With such workers, even a huge pile of documents won't be a problem. Processing marble is not easy, but everything changes when a master gets involved. It seems impossible to break or split this marble slab, especially evenly. But the worker does it very smoothly and accurately. A few precise strikes along a straight line, and the heavy slab splits with extraordinary ease. This task required precise calculation, just like this one. In Germany, they decided to demolish two tall skyscrapers located near other buildings. Despite this, the demolition went perfectly. The workers calculated everything ideally, and the buildings fell down, creating only a giant dust cloud and not damaging any nearby structures. They say the most effective results are produced by lazy people, and when you watch this video, you believe it. The worker didn't want to walk on foot and clear the parking spots with a leaf blower, so he decided to do it on the go, driving along with the leaf blower on some mini vehicle. As a result, the leaves were cleared in a matter of seconds, which could have taken several minutes. It would have taken a lot of time and effort, so they created this chute down which containers filled with earth slide. Imagine the time savings. Here's another brilliant idea. Instead of manually cleaning the pond of various debris, people installed a reservoir near the pier that goes up and down. This creates a small whirlpool, and the debris gets sucked in and falls into the reservoir. Few hours of such movement, and all the trash in the pond will be collected without human intervention. Today, we've already seen the wonders people can do when carrying bricks. Next up is another strongman genius who managed to single-handedly load a large refrigerator into a pickup truck. Knowing the principle of levers and fulcrums can multiply your strength many times over. Geniuses can be not only workers, but also the equipment they create. Here we see a mechanical lumberjack. Machine holds the log moves it forward, and the saw cuts it into smaller pieces. Everything happens very efficiently. A person couldn't handle this task as quickly. In the case is a master of creating 3D drawings. This worker decided to make a 3D floor using a chair. It looks voluminous, but in fact, it's just a few wooden planks lying horizontally at a certain angle. In my opinion, it turned out very plausible. And a bit more mesmerizing stuff. There's not much to comment on here. The workers just efficiently create scaffolding, and it looks great. We've looked at genius workers. Now let's look at genius architects and their unique creations. 
What is the purpose of a house anyway? One of the main functions is to shelter its residents from prying eyes. Don't you agree? However, in the case of the first house in this selection, this is unrealistic. It's completely transparent. And if it were in some modest place where there are few people, the house is located in a multi-million populated Tokyo in one of the busiest areas of the capital. The walls of this house are transparent, so the inhabitants need to try to hide from passers-by who look at the unusual architectural marvel now and then. In addition, because of this design, the house is constantly flooded with sun, so it can be hot and dazzling inside, literally. The house itself is not very large, only 915 square feet. However, it has a practical layout. The space is divided into many levels connected by numerous staircases. The house has a modern kitchen, bedrooms, and lounge areas. Okay, maybe uninhibited people can relax in such rooms, but what should introverts do? Plus, a lot of people in Japan are known to be socially shy, so a house like this seems like a mockery of them. But that's not a problem. Even though the house is transparent, residents can roll down the blinds and hide from prying eyes and the scorching sun. But still, introverts would do well in a different kind of house, somewhere far away from everyone else. And to me, this house on the Icelandic island of Ellare is the most ideal. Just one house on a huge island. No wonder it's called the loneliest house in the world. The house itself isn't anything special. It's a modest structure without any fancy technology or anything else. Besides, it's far from new. It was built back in the 1950s. But who lives here? Some kind of caretaker or hermit? Many people think so. And someone even expressed the opinion that the popular Icelandic singer Bjork lives here. In fact, the house on the island of Ellare is a sort of base for Icelandic hunters and fishermen. The island is not suitable for permanent living, but you can come here periodically to hunt local birds and catch fish. Hunters and fishermen do just that. This is insane. Although today it's more common to see tourists who come here to visit the loneliest house on the planet as part of excursions. Hunters, fishermen, and tourists don't have to worry about that house. It's unlikely it'll ever be torn down to be replaced by something else. Nevertheless, this happens regularly in busy areas, and residents have to say goodbye to their homes to please the authorities. But there are some who refuse to do so. For example, a woman named Liang living in the house right in the middle of the bridge. A few years ago, the authorities of the Chinese city of Gangzhou decided to build a bridge here, and all the residents moved into new houses, all except Liang who was the only one left. It's not known why she was so stubborn. According to one version, the government didn't offer her replacement. According to another, it did, but in a region she didn't like. And according to a third version, Liang was offered insufficient compensation. In the end, she flatly refused to move out, and the authorities had to build a bridge around her house. This, by the way, is not the only such house in China. There are quite a lot of them, and they're called nail houses. Their tenants refuse outright to move out of them, and as a result, their houses now stand in the middle of highways, in quarries, between high-rises, and so on. Do you think this is the strangest thing about houses in China? Well, the Middle Kingdom can surprise you even more, because you can even find mobile homes here. And I don't mean a house on wheels, I mean a house on legs. The author of this creation is Chinese Liu Lingxiao, who moves around the country with his house. The frame of the house is made of bamboo, and it's covered with polythylene and plastic. There's no floor, but there are several shelves inside. You can even build a fire in the house, and the main thing is that it protects well from wind and rain. That's why Liu built it. One day he lost his job, was evicted from his regular house, and had to wander around. He was tired of hiding from the weather, so he thought of creating such an unusual portable house to make his life at least a little more comfortable. Although the house may seem light, it actually weighs 130 pounds, so carrying it on his back is not so easy. But Liu got used to it. He walks dozens of miles a day and earns money by selling empty plastic bottles. It may seem to some that Liu Ling Chao's portable dwelling is not only unusual, but also the smallest house in the world. But compared to the real record holder, it's very large. And here is the smallest residential house on the planet. Its area is just 10.8 square feet. It looks more like some kind of a dog hole, but no, according to its creator, Van Bo Lamensel, it's a dwelling house. 
What can you do in it? Well, for example, you can sit on a chair at a small table. You can also look out the window at the people who are shocked to see this micro dwelling. You can even sleep in the house. For this, you need to turn it over and put it on one of the walls. It's not difficult to do this because the house weighs only 88 pounds. The furniture inside is foldable, so the house can be quickly transformed from a study to a bedroom and back again. With this project, Van Bo Lemensel wanted to draw attention to the pressing modern problems of buying your own home. Everyone knows that housing is particularly expensive these days, and even renting can be a problem. But such a house can afford almost everyone. If, for example, we talk about rent, then the resident pays only one euro per day. True, it's unknown whether many people would seriously want to live in this house for a long time. We have another record-breaking house next in line. If the previous one was the smallest in the world, this one is the narrowest. And this is no longer a portable container, but a full-fledged building located in Poland. This is the Carrot House. It's named in honor of the writer Edgar Carrot, who was the first tenant. From the street, the house looks like an elevator or some other kind of shaft. And in terms of size, the house does look like an elevator. At its narrowest point, it's just over 35 inches wide, and at its widest point, about 5 feet wide. And although it's difficult to even turn around in the house itself, and it's unrealistic to spread your arms apart, the structure is not as simple and meager as it seems. The house has two floors. On the first floor, there's a kitchen, a tiny dining room, and a toilet with a shower. And on the second floor, you can find a bedroom and a workplace. Although the house can be lived in, albeit with difficulty, the building itself is more of an art installation and an art object. The architect of the house, Jacob Sesny, was walking around Warsaw one day and noticed a gap between two houses, into which he eventually crammed the house. According to him, the carrot house is a metaphor for the connection between the eras of the city. Today we've already checked out the loneliest house in the world. The next, we have something similar but even more unusual. This is a stone house, or Casa de Penedo, located in Portugal. Outwardly, it looks more like a house from a fairy tale. For example, the dwelling of Shrek. <sighs> However, it's a real house. The owners of this house specially chose a secluded place, a mountain 2,600 feet high, on top of which you could arrange an unusual dwelling. The walls and foundations of the house are giant boulders, so the house rock fully justifies its name. And although the house itself is quite modest, and there is literally nothing around, the owners were happy with it. However, they were not alone for long. Soon, the locals found out about the unusual house, and the stone house became a tourist attraction. The owners couldn't put up with it and moved out. Now, no one lives in the house on a permanent basis, but there's no shortage of tourists. River House What do you picture when you hear that phrase? Probably some small house on the bank of a river, right? But what if I told you that there's a house in the world that's literally in the middle of a river? Well, here it is. It's a house on the Drina River, and in Serbia, it's considered one of the most unusual sites. As in the case of the Portuguese stone house, the reason for this structure was the desire for privacy. In 1968, a group of young friends decided to build a house in the middle of the river so they could have a kind of shelter for resting and sunbathing after swimming. With the help of boats, canoes, and the natural flow of the river, the guys transported materials to the site and built the unusual house. They didn't even have to care about the foundation, it was a rock. Since then, the house has been rebuilt and restored several times. The Drina River is considered a turbulent river, so the water periodically damages the house. But these Serbs do not let the elements destroy the structure. Recently, it's been regarded as a symbol of the unsinkable Serbian spirit. Now, nobody lives in this house on a permanent basis. On the other hand, it's often visited by tourists. It's not just individual houses that can surprise, but entire settlements, especially if the local population is in the millions. And I'm not talking about large metropolitan areas, but about slums. It may shock some people, but some slums really do have that many people living in them. It's believed that the most populated slums are Oranji in Pakistan. For objective reasons, it's difficult to calculate the exact number of the locals, but it's estimated that there are 2.4 million in Oranji. To give you an idea of the scale, that's more than countries like Slovenia or Gabon. I have to say, for a slum, this place looks pretty decent. 
Yes, poverty, infrastructure problems, and insane development are in the face, but here, for example, there's even a sewage system. Normally, slums don't have sewage. Still, it's far from paradise on Earth. Crime is rampant in Iranji, and the most important problem is considered the lack of services and jobs. Settlers have no way to earn enough money to meet their basic needs or to acquire suitable land for housing. And yet, in the minds of many, a slum must look even worse than Iranji. It must be absolutely chaotic, unsanitary, and in general, it must look like hell. Dharavi, India's famous slum, has it all. If this place seems familiar to you, then most likely you've seen the movie Slumdog Millionaire. The main characters of the Oscar-winning film are just the natives of Dharavi. Even in the movie, the slums look creepy, but in reality, it's even worse. This is largely because of the population density. It's the largest among all the slums in the world. On an area of a couple square miles, from 700,000 to a million people live. Scientists believe that the population density here is almost 280,000 people per square kilometer. This is 6.5 times more than Manila, the city with the highest population density on the planet. Dravi is very crowded. The local river is used as a shower toilet, sink, and washing machine, and the locals themselves have to literally survive every day. To do this, many people work in mini factories and factories that produce and export products across the country. For this, the locals get a pittance, just a dollar or two a day. Meanwhile, the total annual income from the goods is estimated at a billion dollars. By the way, still remember that mini home that Van Bulemensel created? Well, he was talking about the expensive rent. Well, he would definitely like the rent in Dharavi. It's the lowest in the world. Renting a room costs only $4 a month. But would anyone move here of their own free will? On the contrary, people are trying to get away from here, and the Indian authorities are trying to transform Dharavi, making the slums more pleasant. But it's not really working so far. One of the major problems of any slum is garbage. In the case of slums, this is at least understandable, but it can't be on the same scale in cities, right? Turns out that it doesn't. There's a place on the planet called Garbage City or Trash City, and it's located in Egypt. To be precise, it's not an entire city, just a neighborhood in Cairo. But still, the funny thing is that not far from here are the very pyramids. We'll talk about them next time. Manshiat Nasser, that's the name of this quarter. In fact, it is one continuous dump. Here, you can find garbage of all kinds. The buildings here are also full of garbage. The first floors are often used for garbage, and people live on the upper floors. This unusual situation in the neighborhood is not because the locals are dirty people who don't know how to dispose of garbage, just the opposite. Garbage collection is their main activity. Litter is brought to the neighborhood because of the lack of waste treatment plants in Cairo. The locals, called Zabalin, recycle and dispose of it. Collecting, sorting, and recycling garbage is considered a family business in Manshiat Nasser and generates a good income. That still doesn't change the fact that life in this neighborhood is hellish, and the sanitation and safety situation here is simply monstrous. Since garbage is often collected with bare hands and can contain hazardous waste, almost half of the residents have hepatitis and other viruses. As you can imagine, they don't live in a city of garbage collectors for very long. Life is no easier in the next place, this time a full-fledged city. It's called La Rinconada and it's located in Peru in the Andes. It would seem that living in the mountains should mean clean and fresh air, so it should be good for you, but not in this case. La Rinconada is too high. To be precise, it is 3.2 miles above sea level. This is only a few hundred meters lower than volcanoes like Albris or Kilimanjaro. La Rinconada is one of the highest settlements on the planet. There is just half the oxygen than in non-highland settlements. The temperature is consistently low and almost doesn't change, and most townspeople live in makeshift shacks without heating, running water and sewage. In addition, La Rinconada has a high crime rate and drinking is considered a way of life. Meanwhile, there are about 30,000 people living here, and the population is only growing. The question is, who are all these people? Are they people who are bored with life? Not at all. They're people who want to get rich. The fact is that the city has rich reserves of gold ore, and everyone wants to extract the maximum amount of precious metal. 
people work hard and do not spare themselves, and there's also a kind of challenge. Some residents work for free for a month, on the last day of which they have the right to take as much ore as they can carry on their own. And although there is no guarantee that the mined ore will contain at least some pure gold, so people play with death in the hope of becoming richer. Itakor Tournament It's hard to pronounce the name of this town, but it's even harder to get here. If La Rancanada can be called the highest altitude settlement in the world, this is perhaps the most isolated. The locals hunt bears and whales and fish whenever possible. They have an interesting way of life, and the town itself, though tiny, is recognizable. Its beautiful houses are not to be confused with anything else. In this Greenlandic town, you can enjoy the northern nature and feel at the end of the world, so it's not surprising that many tourists are eager to get here. In the comments, write in which of these places you'd like to live. Leave a like and subscribe to our channel.